Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. New feature in our show, Journal Club. Going back, back in time today. Today we're going to go back in time, but in general, people who are watching, listen, there is good medical information available to you. There's like Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA, yep. uh, New England Journal of Medicine, and yep. anyone can subscribe. I mean, a full subscription costs money, but for free. Vogue. You, you can, Vogue. <laughs> They're in Vogue. But did you say GQ? Were you going to say GQ? I was about GQ? to say GQ. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Put those down for a minute. Put down the Vogue and the GQ. Okay. There, I mean, there's a time and a place. Sure. But for medical information, go to some good medical journals and right. try and get some good medical information. Right. Um, they're available to you. Some of the articles are over my head. Some Agreed. of the articles, if you're not in that specialty, but there's a lot of articles that you can digest a good significant portion of it. And try to find a journal that you think is reputable. So. So the, the name of the journal often will give it away. So yeah. if it sounds really obscure, chances are it is. And the reason that the authors of that study targeted that journal is because no one else agreed to publish it. So often, yeah. just so people know, what happens is you do a study, you put a paper, you send it to your first choice. And then it's like, it's like the spring dance or whatever. You, you go ask your first choice and she's yeah. like, I already got a date. And that journal article says, sorry, this is not for us. It's not our kind of, it's not good enough quality. Right. So then you go to your second choice, your third choice. And eventually you're just mm -hmm. scanning the room. Is there anyone left to dance with? And often it's the mm -hmm. obscure journal of That's right. middle of nowhere. If you're getting your medical information from journals that have advertisements for hair transplantation <laughs> and implants of those sorts of nature, then you're probably not looking at the right journal. So, all right, here we go. To start our journal club, we're going to start 100 years ago. We're going to go back 100 years. This is around the time yeah. when like Little House on the Prairie was set. Right, so po between post World War One and Two, I guess, 1922, you're saying, Yeah, right? 1920. Was that Little House on the Prairie? It's probably a little bit pre, but that's okay. I was really crushing on Mary Ingalls. In that oh show. yeah, I remember her. And yeah. then when she went blind, I thought, I think I might have a chance. Oh. Because she won't that, see what I look like. Sure. She won't see that I'm handsome. It's about what's on the inside. It's what's inside. It's on the inside. Anyways, I saw enough Little House on the prairie. Yes. British Medical Journal. Okay. Some observations on post anesthetic complications. This is a real publication from the British Medical Journal from 1922. This is amazing. Okay. They studied 571 surgical cases. I didn't even know they did 571 surgeries in 1922. Now, wait a second. Where did you get that piece of paper? Is that piece of paper from 1922? This is straight from the. This it's is like a Sanskrit. <laughs> it's been carried around with me for a while. Wow. You're a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Older than you look. You're digressing. Right. So basically they looked at three post-operative anesthetic complications. Okay. Chest trouble, flatulence, and vomiting. Okay. Now I thought that was interesting because I wonder the poor statistician who had to record the incidence of flatulence. Right. Was he there counting with a counter one? Like a two, clicker. Three. Oh no, that was me, sorry. Three, four. Yes. How'd you do that? Anyways. They recorded that and they studied it and they found an incidence of complications. And so we went to anesthetists of today. Yes. And we asked them of these three complications, chest trouble, flatulence, vomiting, which ones have we made the most progress with? Oh, okay. And, and you know, we have great anesthetists. We have here. awesome anesthetists at our hospital. So let's go see what they said. Okay. Thanks. So we just wanted you to answer a question about this paper from British Medical Journal. Uh, from exactly 100 years ago, it's a post-operative anesthetic complication. Which of those three complications have we made the most progress with? Can you see them there? Uh, let's see. One, two, three post-op complications, namely chest trouble, flatulence, and vomiting. We'll get back. Have uh, post-operative complications, namely uh, chest trouble, flatulence, and vomiting. Yeah. The least we've made progress on is vomiting okay. and flatulence. Okay. I think the ones we've made some progress on will be chest trouble. Uh, I think <laughs> I'd agree with that. Thank you very much for your You're insights. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I think over the past 100 years, I think uh, vomiting... Better than flatulence? Um, is that still well, flatulence, thing? yeah, well... I've been practicing for 25 years. I would say in the last 25 years, we've made significant progress in nausea and vomiting management postoperatively. Okay, so no progress in the flatulence department? <laughs> I don't think so. We don't see that that's a problem. Oh, uh, excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, I mean, we've, we've made a lot of progress with flat, flat length, yes. Okay. Um, but of the three, chest trouble. Um, Over the last hundred years, so out of these three, honestly, I would say probably I don't think flatulence is a post anesthetic complication that I warn my patients about. Okay. Um, so this is a, a very big progress that we have made in the last hundred years. For in that sure. department, good. Okay, yeah. good. And chest troubles and chest troubles and vomitings have also gone down better. quite significantly. Excellent. Thank you so much for your expertise. <laughs> When you say chest trouble, are you talking about, the question is, are we talking about um, cardiac, respiratory? Yeah, cardiac, cardio arrest. Respiratory trouble. Um. There you have it. Sort of a mis mishmash of opinions as to which topics, which areas of post-operative complication we've made the most improvement in. And actually, I would say, I think in my 15 years of practice, I feel like anesthesia has come a very long yeah. way. I feel like they've changed more things than we've changed. Where right. we've tweaked a little thing, but I, I think it's like night and day. People used to throw up all the time. Remember, they'd be on their side. The minute they woke up, they'd get them on their side. So Apparently I feel like they the, were flatulating all the it's, time. It's come along. We've come Surgery a long way. Surgery was a success. Sorry about the flatulation. Sorry. Right. I'll, yeah. take, I'll take my goiter back. That's right. So there you have it. 100 years ago, a journal. And we're going to keep coming at you with more recent journal articles. And I, we encourage you to check out some of the medical journals and see if you can get some of the information out of them yourself. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. I think, I think flat lens would be number one. Uh, vomiting would be probably number two, and then chest trouble would be number three. Thank you. Say. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Horace <laughs> Parker, and thank you for the list today.